We were at the Kentucky Crafted Market this past year and bumped into a couple of artists you're about to meet. Not only was their art eye-catching, but each piece told a story. And when they shared that they painted with layers of wax, I said, guys, you've got to be on Bluegrass and Backroads. Here's Papka Art. Um, my art actually is mixed media assemblage and I happen to use a medium uh, of beeswax and uh, damar resin and that's called encaustic wax which is an old Greek term to burn in. So we have to fuse this wax and uh, the assemblage of course is with found objects. Well I also do uh, mixed media. Each piece I do pretty much tells a story so um, the found objects I use complement the piece and help tell a story. And I got into art, uh, I had a lifelong love of building, uh, woodworking, uh, tinkering, and then I had a career as a scientist. Um, I just sort of got into this uh, by an evolutionary process. This piece actually happens to be called uh, Traveling the Seven Seas. And to me, this is that represents the ocean and the sky that uh, an old sailor uh, might think about as he's traveling these seven seas. And he's collected all of these wonderful objects on his travels. And of course, the compass has kept him on course and this represents time and, um, and the balance of, of the earth as you're traveling around. I love this piece. My artwork seems to be totally process driven. I don't, I may have an idea of what the theme is, but I may not. And, um, and it's just where it takes me as I'm, as I'm doing it. And I usually don't name it until I'm finished. And Ray is totally different. He looks at it in another way. I usually s start with a title. And um, the title helps me with the evolution of, of the piece. Now it can change dramatically during the, the process, but I always start with a title and I, I liken this to my scientific life of having a hypothesis to help uh, set up and drive an experiment, and I guess that's the scientist uh, in me coming out. But I think both of us, when we have shown together or separately, one of the comments that's often made is, this work is really cerebral. This piece uh, was inspired by probably the most loved shape uh, in our society, the circle. And the title of it is uh, About Circles. And one of the things that can be highlighted here is the fact that you can add pigments to your encaustic medium to create color, which a lot of encaustic artists do. I sign my pieces uh, by uh, using uh, carbon paper with uh, an incising tool, and I put the carbon paper on and then write my name, and that transfers the carbon from the paper and into the wax. And you have a permanent record of your uh, signature on your art. I started a triptych, which is a, a uh, uh, three panels that, that go together. And uh, this particular panel deals with time. A lot of my work deals with time. So uh, this signifies linear time and circular time. And in costos in Greek means to fuse or burn in. So once I put that layer of wax on, I have to lightly heat it with a hot air gun or a propane torch to burn it in to the previous layer. And it doesn't take much. I'm holding it up here so I can just see a little uh, glassiness develop. And when I see that little shiny glassiness, I know that that is uh, heated enough to become fused. OK, this piece um, uh, was inspired by my love of maps 
and travel. This one is entitled Prime Meridian, and it was in inspired by the uh, Prime Meridian that runs uh, it's actually a, a painted metallic line that runs through England, France, Spain. And when you see it, it's actually a metal piece uh, uh, coupled or uh, highlighted by two additional uh, aluminum pieces. And that's what's represented up here with the prime meridian running uh, through the middle of it. And then this old croquet ball was, was uh, cut in half and sized and a piece uh, added to it to uh, replicate the equator or the uh, latitude. And then other longitudinal lines were added here as found objects. These are actually uh, wires from an old piano. Well, only, uh, I, I think we consider ourselves uh, green artists or eco-artists because we do recycle a lot of books and text that would be just thrown away and burned. We, we, we find a lot of, um, objects that can be reused, people would have just thrown away. Um, and we're actually presenting them back to the public in a different form. Um, and they tend to be amazed by it because they can look and say, I have one of those, but I, I would have never thought to use it in such a way. So I think we, we, we give people some inspiration about um, the fact that you can find beauty and art in almost anything you pick up. It just depends on the way you look at it.